The next objective is about local, neighborhood, and global functions. And they are similar to the local, neighborhood, and global operators in the spatial analysis. And this is basically the scope of the raster functions. Uh, there are three scopes. Uh, the local functions are those where the attributes of individual pixels are used in the function. And in the case of neighborhood functions, the attributes of adjacent pixels are used as well. Whereas in the case of global functions, the pixels of all, uh, from all the raster data are used. For example, if we have a DEM uh, data set, which is the elevation, and we convert the units of the elevation, for example, from feet to meters, then that would be considered a local operation. Each pixel will be multiplied with some factor to compute a new pixel. And so that would be a local operation. But if we were trying to compute slope or, for example, aspect, then one value cannot be used to determine slope. We need some information in the neighborhood. So that would become a neighborhood function, where we take the values from the neighbors, then compute the slope. And lastly, if we were trying to find the highest elevation in the image, then that would become a global function. We need the elevation. We need to use the elevations of all the pixels to find the highest point. So that basically is the three levels of the scope um, when we are applying raster functions. Um, another um, example of neighborhood function is the filtering or moving window. So filtering is performed where we take a, a window, a small window, and slide it over our image. And as we are sliding it, we use the pixels that fall inside the window to compute some new value for the center pixel. And then we shift it to the next. And this way, we move it across all of the pixels of an image uh, to compute some new value. This window, small window, also called the kernel, has a specific configuration and it has specific values that define that kernel or window um, for the filtering process. So for example, in our case of DEM data, we could be running a slope filter. And a slope filter will take all of these four val uh, nine values and compute a new value in the middle pixel, which will be the slope in this region. Um, an aspect will be the direction of the slope. The peak height will be the majority, um, the, sorry, the maximum value inside this window. The valley will be the lowest value in this window. The average height could be the mean, the median, or the mode of the window. And lastly, the height range would be the difference between maximum and minimum value of the window. So, and many other similar moving windows can be defined uh, in a similar way. But we'll talk about two special types of filters called low pass and high pass filters next. And these filters um, are applied to images to achieve two different opposing goals. This the low pass filters they they smoothen the image which means if there are sharp edges those edges kind of are faded away and in simple words high frequency content is removed the content is removed and that's why it's called low pass filter it lets the low pass content or low pass low frequency content pass through and removes the high frequency content or fluctuations on the other hand, the high pass filter actually lets the high frequency content pass through and removes the low frequency content. So when we apply a high, high pass filter, then what we see is the edges in the output. So low pass remove the edges, high pass only keeps the edges. So that's an easy way to remember this. And these are very useful filters um, to process raster data um, when we are trying to uh, either remove the fluctuations in the data or trying to highlight the fluctuations. 
Here is an example of low pass filter. So low pass filter is basically an addition operation or integration. Suppose we are apply the low pass filter here um, and we apply a 3 by 3 filter with the kernel values of 1 over 9. And if you see 1 over 9, there are 9 values and each one has a weight of 1 over 9. When we overlay this over this region of the raster image, we take each value and multiply it with the corresponding weight. So 13 divided by uh, uh, 13 multiplied by 1 over 9 gives us 13 over 9. 12 times 1 over 9 gives us 12 over 9. And similarly, we have all of these nine values multiplied by 1 over 9. And then we add of them all together, and that gives us 11.9. The output 11.9 is the value for the center of this pixel and we create a new image and we put that value over there. Then we shift the window to the next uh, pixel and then repeat the process. So in this way we, if you notice the, the variation from 11 to 12 is smoothened out because um, this value has re reduced and this value has reduced as well a little bit. And so this was 12, 12, 11. It has become 11.1, 11.3, and 10.2. And so the variation is reduced. If you, if you looked at the standard deviation of these values versus these values, this one will have a lower standard deviation. Similarly, um, we do the, repeat the process all over, and we get the values for a low-pass filtered data. Notice that we didn't get any values at the borders and that is because it's difficult to process borders when there is no uh, padding. Now one way to do is that we pad some additional cells around it to compute values and that's called modification of the kernel sometimes. And these are the kernels, variations of the main kernel which is 3 by 3 kernel for corners and margins and you go through this calculation and convince yourself that these values were correct, calculated correctly using these um, kernels. Um, a high pass filter is not integration but the opposite of integration. It's called subtraction or differentiation. And in this case we have negative weights in the window so that the overall process is a difference operation and when we again multiply all of the weights to the corresponding values in the raster image and then add them together we get edge edges highlighted for example in this data if you look at this data this has 980 all over here 940 these pixel values and 900 over here and this clear edge over here and over here Edge means the values change abruptly. Now if we use a horizontal difference where all of the values are zeros except these two horizontal uh, middle row 1 and minus 1. When we apply this filter over here all of these uh, all of these are 0 these are 0 and this filter computes the difference between this pixel and this pixel and places it here. So if there is no difference, it will get a value zero. But if there, um, sorry, here, if there is no difference, it will get a value zero. But if it was, if it was at an edge, then there is a difference of forty between these two pixels, and difference of forty between these two pixels, and that's why the forty will appear in the output, and the rest will be zero. And so in this way, we have detected vertical lines using a horizontal difference. Similarly, if we use a vertical difference, which is a column of 1 and minus 1 with everything else 0, then we find horizontal edges in the image. Convince yourself with this example that these two filters find edges in this image.